This video provides an overview of the Aperion i90 scanner, providing ControlLogix integration with Bailey Infi90IO. We will provide a brief introduction to the product, describe the configuration and available diagnostics, and discuss typical migration examples. The i90 scanner allows a ControlLogix system to configure and control Bailey Infi90IO modules. This provides a reduced risk migration strategy for these legacy Bailey systems. Instead of replacing all the I.O., a new control edge system can be phased in with little disruption to production. The phased in approach is enabled by an intermediate or shadow mode where the I-90 scanner operates in a listen-only mode, providing input and output readback data to Logix. In this mode, the existing Bailey CPU is still in control. Later, the Bailey CPU can be removed and the I-90 scanner switched to run mode, allowing Logix to configure and control the I.O. modules directly. The i90 scanner provides multiple redundancy options and simplifies configuration with the facility to import configuration from the Bailey system. We will now look at some key features of the i90 scanner. The i90 scanner plugs directly into the Infi90 rack and occupies a single slot. It communicates and derives power from the Bailey backplane and supports insertion and removal under power. Up to 34 IO modules can be configured per i90 scanner and multiple scanners can be added to a control logic CPU where required. The i90 scanner provides dual Ethernet ports, which are capable of participating in a device-level ring. A pair of i90 scanners can be configured in a redundant, active standby configuration. Integration into Logix makes use of an EDS add-on profile, which provides IO module data and diagnostics in an intuitive tag structure. Configuration of the scanner and IO modules makes use of the Aperion Slate configuration software. We will now look at some topology examples. In this first example, we have a simple system where the Bailey CPU is still in control and the i90 scanner is operating in shadow mode. In this mode, Logix has access to the IO data and status which can be useful for testing both the control logic and HMI. Although usually used as a stepping stone in migration, this mode can also be used to provide access for a new historian in a more permanent role. Here is the same example, except the Bailey CPU has been removed and the i90 scanner placed in run mode. The control logix via the i90 scanner is now in control of the IO module outputs. Here we see an example of i90 scanner redundancy. Two scanners, identically configured, are placed on the same IO expander bus segment. In this configuration, one of the scanners will be active whilst the other will be in standby. Should the active scanner fail or lose its connection with logix, the standby scanner will take over. The process is seamless and the IO modules will continue unaffected. The provided add-on instruction ensures the map data is always sourced from the active scanner and no additional user logic is required. Here we have the same i90 scanner redundancy but with Ethernet device level ring implemented. This provides Ethernet media redundancy. The last example shows all three levels of redundancy. In addition to the scanner and device level ring Ethernet redundancy, a redundant control logic configuration has been implemented. We will now take a look at configuration. As with all Aperion modules, the i90 scanner is configured using the Aperion Slate configuration software, which can be downloaded free of charge from the Aperion website. The configuration is relatively simple, with the setting of the scanner's IP address, redundancy option, and the operating mode, either run or shadow. Adding IO modules to the scanner can be done manually or by importing a Bailey Control Logic document export file. When adopting manual configuration, each required IO module is selected and added to the i90 scanner. The Logix address, that is, where the IO module's data will appear in the Logix tag structure, and the module's physical address must be configured. The module's physical address must match the slave address configured by the IO module's physical DIP switches. Depending on the IO module type, certain IO point or channel configuration options will be available, for example, signal type and engineering unit scaling. When adopting the file import approach, the control logic document file, previously exported from the Bailey system, can be imported into the slate configuration software. An import summary is presented and the user need only to select the IO modules needed. All the IO module configuration, including the per IO point or channel configuration, is automatically applied to the i90 scanner configuration. The i90 scanner can be added to the Logix IO tree by using the EDS add-on profile. The EDS file can either be downloaded from the Aperion website or uploaded from the module itself. A mapping L5X routine is also provided, which includes all the required user-defined data types, tags, and the redundant scanner add-on instruction. All the scanner and IO module data and status information is available in the resulting tag structure. Diagnostics Diagnostics associated with the scanner and each IO module are available in both Logix and via the Slate software status window. This includes a module live list and communication statistics for each IO module. 
we will now look at two typical migration examples. We start off with a basic INFI 90 system with two racks or MMUs. Since the system has fewer than 34 IR modules, a single I90 scanner solution can be employed. Initially, the existing Bailey CPU is controlling the IR. The ancillary Bailey infrastructure is excluded for the sake of clarity. The next step is to add the Rockwell infrastructure, including Logix, Studio 5000, Factory Talk View, and Historian. So far, the Bailey system is unaffected. We then add an I90 scanner, configure it for the IR modules, and place it in shadow mode. The I90 scanner is connected to Logix via Ethernet IP and provides input and output readback data to the Control Logix and Factory Talk View. At this point, the Bailey CPU is still controlling the application. When the Control Logix application is ready, the Bailey CPU can be removed and the I90 scanner placed in run mode. The Control Logix is now controlling the application. It is important to note that if any issues are experienced during the changeover, the system can be switched back in a matter of minutes. This limits production downtime and further reduces the risk of the overall migration. And finally, we will look at a migration example with more than 34 IO modules. The system consists of four MMUs, all connected on a common IO expander bus with a single Bailey CPU. As before, the next step is to add a control logic. This time we will add two I90 scanners. Both will be configured in shadow mode and will divide up the IO configuration. The first scanner will host the first 23 IO modules and the second the remaining 17. The choice of where the split occurs is arbitrary as long as the IO module count for each scanner does not exceed 34. In this step, the Bailey CPU is still in control. Again, as before, the Bailey CPU is removed. This time, however, before the I90 scanners are placed in run mode, the IO expander bus must be segmented. This involves removing the backplane dip shunt at the required position to create two separate IO expander bus segments. The control logics is now controlling the application via the two I90 scanners. This concludes the product overview of the Aperion i90 scanner module. For more information, please visit aperion.com or email sales at aperion.com.